Hi everyone, Dr. Scott Therrell here with you today and for the next couple minutes I want to share with you some insights regarding chronic pain and how your brain and your gut are connected. And really what it comes down to is that your gut is incredibly important in keeping your immune system healthy. And we've heard this for a long time, you know, those old adages of you are what you eat and it's very important to consider low inflammatory diets. And a lot of times we don't really know what that exactly means. So for the most part, let's just start with this. Your diet should generally be at least a balanced aspect of fats, proteins, and carbs. Now everyone has very specific diets that they try to follow and they have chronic neurologic complaints and I understand that and I want to honor all of those. But in general, if you're somebody just watching this saying, hey, how does my intestinal tract really affect my brain function in the first place? It's important to note that what you eat may affect your gut function and depending upon the health of your intestinal tract, what you eat can affect your gut function a little bit or it can affect it a lot. Now why is the gut function so important? It's because your gut is the first line of defense for your immune system. So think about it, what you breathe in and what you eat in terms of it touching your nose and your mouth, those mucous membranes are your very first line of defense for your immune system and from there it's one continuous tube right on down through and we know where it ends. So from that perspective, if you're eating foods that cause your immune system to respond actively, whether it's to try to protect you or whether it's actually fighting what you eat and trying to get rid of it even faster, that immune system response is going to have secondary consequences. And you'll remember that we always talk about the immune system as one of kind of the big three. There's the immune system, there's the nervous system, and there's the endocrine system, that whole NEI, neuroendoimmune threesome that work together and function together and can affect each other for better or for worse all day every day. So as you're eating, if you're eating foods that are pro-inflammatory to you, and please understand that not everyone is sensitive to gluten, right? Not everyone is sensitive to dairy or to soy or to corn. I mean, we're very dynamic as human beings. So let's not put everybody into any one particular category, but if you're eating something that you are sensitive to, that causes your immune system to specifically work in a way that generally is harder, uh, it can lead to extra molecules being released that are pro-inflammatory. And these pro-inflammatory molecules are called cytokines and chemokines. And cytokines can circulate. They circulate in your bloodstream, and once they're in your bloodstream, they can pass what's called your blood-brain barrier. Your blood-brain barrier is a very tightly controlled section of vasculature where various neuronal and immune cells work very hard to make sure that what's allowed to come into your brain and your cerebral spinal fluid is tightly controlled. I think that makes great sense, right? We don't want everything coming in and uh, potentially affecting how our central nervous system and our brain works. So this blood-brain barrier is very tightly controlled, but these pro-inflammatory cytokines can pass through this blood-brain barrier and once inside your central nervous system they can wreak a lot of havoc. So if you're eating things that are pro-inflammatory causing an increase in pro-inflammatory cytokines and yes you can test cytokines on blood work and you can look for even stimulated cytokines to see just how busy they are when they're stimulated with various pro-inflammatory agents in the laboratory to get a real window of function. If that's happening to you, we can then get to the next step of, well, it must be affecting the central nervous system and it affects peripheral nervous system as well. Once inside the brain, and if you're having a lot of these pro-inflammatory cytokines, this can happen very quickly, right? In a matter of, of hours and certainly days, especially if you're eating things a little bit all day, every day, it becomes just chronic. Every day you're causing this pro-inflammatory response. And once inside the brain, they're very, very stimulatory. So these pro-inflammatory cytokines cause the release of a lot of various neurotransmitters and secondary chemicals. One of those big neurotransmitters is called glutamate. Glutamate's the most excitatory neurotransmitter that we know of in your central nervous system. And high levels of glutamate, which you've heard me mention on other test results before, if we test these urine neurotransmitter test results and we see real high levels of glutamate, we do worry about immune activity and whether or not that immune system is working at a much higher rate than we would like it to see. High levels of glutamate don't feel good. They do provide us energy, but they also tend to provide a real sense of feeling kind of overstimulated and overexcited in a way that doesn't feel good both emotionally as well as physically. And the secondary consequences of having really high glutamate 
are, from an immune perspective, very degenerative. So high glutamate levels ultimately, as well as these high um, chemokines and cytokines, start to degenerate our central nervous system. And all these various supportive cells of our central nervous system in our brain that normally are trying to help us all of a sudden release these high levels of glutamate because of what we're potentially eating, always causing low level inflammation, releasing more cytokines peripherally from our gut, crossing into our brain, and then all of a sudden our central brain structures and cells start to release all this glutamate. And that cascade that happens from glutamate on down can lead to your neurons just not functioning well, becoming overexcited initially and ultimately leading to fatigability. And when that happens, our brains don't feel good at all. That can result in chronic pain, for example, and chronic inflammation. It can result in chronic mood disorders. And whether it be depression or whether it be anxiety, it can result in insomnia aspects. It can result in attention and cognitive aspects. And so you're starting to see terms such as inflammatory depression pop up in the literature. The same can be said for all of these inflammatory cascades, whether it be inflammatory insomnia, inflammatory anxiety, inflammatory cognitive issues with memory issues, all of this starts to pop up and become the great cycle. And we've known the cycle, we're just continuing to learn about how it works in greater and greater detail. So what do you do? Make sure that you're not just eating sugar, right? If all that you eat primarily is pizza and processed foods, we're going to have a problem with this pro-inflammatory immune response. But if you already feel like you're doing a good job eating a halfway balanced diet and you still feel like your immune system is kind of working in overdrive and it's affecting how your brain works in terms of mood and memory and energy and attention and all of these scenarios, then by all means consider going the next step. Think about food sensitivity testing if you need to, and that can be done with IgG or IgE testing, right? And those are blood tests. Think about whether or not you want to look at a comprehensive digestive stool analysis to see what's going on, and whether or not you might have a dysbiosis in your gut where different probiotics can make a very big difference. Think about how your sympathetic nervous system is working, your fight or flight nervous system. And if your sympathetic fight or flight nervous system is working so hard and it's really in overdrive, or the opposite end of that, it's absolutely fatigued and it really can't rally at all, that will affect how your immune response works. So depending upon the balance between sympathetic fight or flight and parasympathetic rest and digest, that can have a great effect on not only how your gut works, but also your energy, your mood, your sleep patterns, etc. And when we're going to assess sympathetic nervous system, aside from the usual physical examination findings that we'll be looking at, such as do you sweat more on one side of your body than the other? Is your blood pressure higher on one side of your body than the other? Is your pupil dilation different on one side than the other? Those are various functional neurology examination tips that we look at physically. We're also going to be sure to look at a urinary neurotransmitter test and be sure to look at things such as norepinephrine and epinephrine for neurotransmitters to get an idea of just where we are in terms of our sympathetic fight or flight system and are we functioning high, are we looking pretty good or actually getting depleted. How does that play into our nervous system, endocrine system, and immune system. So I know that's a real mouthful. I guess what I want you to take away is you're not exactly what you eat, but what you eat can greatly affect your outcome in being the very best and fullest and healthiest human being that you, that you probably want to be. So consider what you're putting into your mouth. Give yourself some great probiotics, some good fish oils, vitamin D is very important. And then if you still feel like your immune system and your nervous system aren't working well together, consider some of those additional tests we talk about. Whether it be a cytokine test, a neurotransmitter test certainly, food sensitivity panels, comprehensive digestive stool analysis, all very, very important. I tend to start with nervous system first to see how it affects immune system, especially if you've already started doing some immune uh, types of interactions on your own where you've eliminated different foods and you've gone, for example, gluten-free and you still feel like you're not working that well. I want to know how the nervous system is coming down and affecting the immune response. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for learning a little bit more about the gut-brain connection and how pro-inflammatory cytokines can really wreak havoc on our brain and vice versa, how if our nervous system is really looking like it's fatigued, it has a hard time regulating the immune response in a healthy way. And that great loop can cause a lot of chronic dysfunction, including fatigue, chronic pain, brain fog, attention and memory issues, sleep disturbances, and uh, generally poor mood. So thanks again. I'm Dr. Scott Thero, hoping you have a fantastic day.